Hello and welcome to Storytime. This week we're going to read books all by Eric Carle and he is an author and illustrator. He writes the books and does the pictures. So our first book is The Very Quiet Cricket. On one warm day from a tiny egg, a little cricket was born. Welcome, chirped the big cricket, rubbing its wings together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Good morning, whizzed a locust, spinning through the air. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Hello, whispered a praying mantis, scraping its huge front legs together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good day, crunched a worm, munching its way out of an apple. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Hi, bubbled a spittle bug flirping in a sea of froth. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good afternoon, screeched a cicada, clinging, clinging to a branch of a tree. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. hummed a bumblebee flying from flower to flower. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good evening, word a dragonfly gliding above the water. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good night, buzzed the mosquitoes dancing among the stars. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. A luna moth sailed quietly through the night, and the cricket enjoyed the stillness. As the luna moth disappeared silently into the distance, the cricket saw another cricket. She too was a very quiet cricket. Then he rubbed his wings together one more time. And this time, he chirped the most beautiful sound that she had ever heard. And the end. Our next story is Head to Toe. penguin and I turn my head. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a giraffe and I bent my neck. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a buffalo and I raise my shoulders. Can you do it? I can do it. I'm a monkey and I wave my arms. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a seal and I clap my hands. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a gorilla and I thump my chest. Can you do it? I can do it. my back. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a crocodile and I wiggle my hips. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a camel and I bend my knees. 
Can you do it? I can do it. I am a donkey and I kick my legs. Can you do it? I can do it. I am an elephant and I stomp my foot. Can you do it? I can do it. I am I and I wiggle my toe. Can you do it? I can do it. I can do it. And good job if you followed along and did all those movements. Our next story is one of Eric Carle's little books. This one is called Calm with the Very Hungry Caterpillar. When your monkey mind feels too busy, just stop and breathe. To clear the cobwebs from your head, With each slow breath, try counting one to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How do you feel? Happy? Sad? Jumpy? Now let dots cross your mind like clouds floating in the sky. Still feeling fluttery? Take a few deep breaths. And smile. Ducks. Chuckity chuckity chuck goes the rubber duck machine. Out pop little rubber ducks, one right after the other, one right after the other. The little rubber ducks are painted, bills red and eyes blue. Then they are pat tin to a box. And off they go. To be loaded onto a cargo ship. Hello, calls the captain. The captain and his cargo ship are taking the little rubber ducks across the wide sea to faraway countries. To faraway countries. Suddenly, a storm churns the water into big waves. A strong wind whistles across the sea, whistles across the sea. A big wave lifts one of the boxes and throws it into the water. The box opens and ten little rubber ducks fall out. Ten rubber ducks overboard, shouts the captain. Ten rubber ducks overboard. After some time, the storm calms down. The ten little rubber ducks bob in the big wide sea. As far as one can see, only water and sky, water and sky. The ten little rubber ducks begin to drift apart. The first little rubber duck drifts west. A dolphin jumps over it. The second little rubber duck drifts east. A seal barks at it. The third little rubber duck drifts north. A polar bear growls at it. The fourth little rubber duck drifts south. A flamingo stares at it. The fifth little rubber duck drifts to the left. A pelican chatters at it. 
The sixth little rubber duck drifts to the right. A turtle glides past it. The seventh little rubber duck drifts up. An octopus blinks at it. The eighth little rubber duck drifts down. A seagull screeches at it. The ninth little rubber duck drifts this way. A whale sings to it. The tenth little rubber duck drifts that way, bobbing and floating on the big wide sea. The sun is setting. It is getting dark. As far as one can see, only water and sky, water and sky. The next morning, the tenth little rubber duck meets a mother duck and her ducklings. Quack, says the mother duck. Quack, 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 say the ducklings. At the end of the day, the sun sets again. It is getting dark. The mother duck and her ducklings swim toward their nest. The little rubber duck floats along with them. Good night, says the moon. Quack, says mother duck. Quack, 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 say the ducklings. Squeak, says the little rubber duck. And at the very beginning, we have ducks with numbers on them. Let's count the ducks. One. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. The next story is called Mr. Seahorse. Mr. and Mrs. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea. Mrs. Seahorse began to wiggle and twist this way and that. It's time for me to lay my eggs, she said. Can I help? asked Mr. Seahorse. Oh yes, thank you, said Mrs. Seahorse, and she laid her eggs into a pouch on Mr. Seahorse's belly. I'll take good care of our eggs, said Mr. Seahorse. I promise. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by a group of trumpet fish hidden in a patch of reeds. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Stickleback? asked Mr. Seahorse. Delighted, replied Mr. Stickleback. I just built my nest, and right away Mrs. Stickleback laid her eggs into it. Now I am taking good care of them until they hatch. Keep up the good work, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam on his way. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by. A lionfish hidden behind a coral reef. But how but before long Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Tilapia? asked Mrs. Mr. Seahorse. Mr. Tilapia couldn't answer. His mouth was full of eggs. I know, I know, said Mr. Seahorse. Mrs. Tilapia laid her eggs. Now you're taking good care of them until they hatch. Mr. Tilapia nodded his head. You must be very happy, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam away. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by several leaf fish hidden among the seaweed. Before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Curtis? asked Mr. Seahorse. Perfectly fine, replied Mr. Curtis. Mrs. Curtis laid her eggs, and I have them stuck on my head. Now I'm taking good care of them until they hatch. You are doing a good job, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam away. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by a stone 
fish hidden behind a rock. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Pipe? asked Mr. Seahorse. Couldn't be better, replied Mr. Pipe. Mrs. Pipe laid her eggs along my belly. Now I'm taking good care of them until they hatch. You should feel proud of yourself, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam on his way. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Bullhead? asked Mr. Seahorse. Tip top, replied Mr. Bullhead. Mrs. Bullhead laid her eggs, and the eggs hatched. Now I'm babysitting. You are doing a fine job, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam away. The time had come for the seahorse babies to be born. Mr. Seahorse wiggled and twisted this way and that. At last, the babies tumbled from Mr. Seahorse's pouch and swam away. One baby turned around and tried to come back into the pouch. Oh no, said Mr. Seahorse, I do love you, but you are now ready to be on your own. And that is the end. Isn't it interesting how all the fish take care of their babies? And we're going to end this story time with a favorite from this from Eric Carl, the very hungry caterpillar. In the light of the moon lay a little lay an egg on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple. He was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a tummy ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house, called a cocoon, around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon and pushed his way out, and... He was a beautiful butterfly. And this is a special edition. This is the 50 year anniversary edition. So there's a little bit more information at the back of this book if you were to check it out. It talks about Errol, Eric Carl. Well, thank you for joining me for story time all about Eric Carl books. We'll see you again next week. Bye.